Okay, now, all by itself, that's a fine aspiration. It's an American thing, right? We like this idea. You own your own home. Okay, that's a good thing. I'm not uh, ridiculing that. But when it becomes a, a, an objective of public policy, and the kind of do-gooders and reshapers and reformers that Boston had in mind, what it means is we, we think everybody should buy a house, even people who have no money and bad credit. They should buy houses. I mean, after all, why should we have discrimination? in the housing market against people that have no money and bad credit. I mean, what, should they be able to buy a house? And we have this ethic that, no, even those people, whoever they are, should be allowed to buy homes. And so government systematically lowered lending standards through the banking system, through Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, you've heard these names before. All that was aimed at one thing, to remove the natural check that the market places on people with bad credit and you know not good reputations and they have they would have to earn those things before they qualified to buy a house. Well that was considered cruel. We're keeping people from owning homes. And the government set out and then Republicans and Democrats to uh, to change that. Well this is the false philanthropy. This is Bos this is what Bostia meant in his day. Maybe he couldn't have imagined this, this this manifestation of it. But it's the same exact thing. It's the false philanthropy. And it's also what the economist in the U.S., Bruce Yandel, calls the Baptists and bootleggers uh, phenomenon. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but the, the, this is a, he worked uh, one time in the government, and he uh, discovered how many, many regulations uh, come about. They come about through an alliance. It may not be an open alliance, but an alliance between the moralizers on the one hand, what he calls the Baptists, meaning the people that make a moral argument for government intervention, and the bootleggers, the people that will profit from it. And he remembered from his childhood growing up in the South when there would be laws proposed to outlaw Sunday sale of liquor. The two big proponents of it were the ministers or the churches, mostly Protestant churches that tried to stop uh, the sale because they thought drinking on Sunday was bad, and the bootleggers, the people that made illegal liquor because if the stores couldn't open, people would still want their liquor, so they'd go and buy illegal sources. So you get this tacit implicit alliance, sometimes it's more open than that, between the people giving this marble case, and it might be sincere, on the one hand, and the people that are going to profit from it on the other hand, and of course they like that the moralizers are out front, right? Because if you say, I'll all Sunday sales so I can make more money selling illegal liquor, you're not going to get anywhere, right? But if you have all the ministers saying, Sunday liquor sales is immoral, it's improper, it's sinful, we should stop this, and then they're behind the scenes, of course, maybe giving them money, to promote the campaign, and meanwhile counting the money they expect to make in the future when the bill gets uh, passed. Well, the same thing with the housing uh, business. You have the uh, you have people out there saying housing ownership is a good thing, which of course it is under normal circumstances. It's a good thing. We should bring it to more and more people, and so that's, that's <coughs> those are the Baptists in this case, and the bootleggers are the building industry, the construction people, right? The banks that makes fee that make fees off mortgages. And the real estate industry saying, yeah, we're going to do very well if everybody's buying a house. And so they, they are all for this. And they talk about how wonderful it is, home, how moral home ownership is, and we all want to promote this. So Bastiat would not be uh, uh, surprised by this. Uh, unfortunately, he, he would not be surprised. Let me close uh, on that note. Uh, you, uh, hopefully, we have some time for some, for time for some questions. Uh, um, I hope I didn't add to the schedule being further behind. But uh, I recommend, if you have not already read the book, has it been uh, translated? Is it yeah. in it's okay, so you, you can read it or read it in English. It's online even, so you can either buy it or read it for free. And, uh, and read it more than once and give it to your friends. And it's, it's just a wonderful thing. And if he had written nothing else, we should still be, we should still be holding this conference and be eternally grateful uh, to Frederick Boskin. So thank you very much. Ponieważ opóźnienie jest bardzo duże, także tylko dwa, trzy pytania i będziemy e, z następnym punktem programu, e, czyli wystąpieniem pana Chrisa Morina i e, pokazem filmowym Narodziny Wolności. To było pierwsze pytanie. This was three years old from Marx. First, you spoke about those people speaking about the rushing of the market. But you have worse coming from the leftists, the tyranny of the market. 
No, no commentary question. <laughs> Second, uh, you, you pointed out how important that book was, the, the law. And yet, it is not a book that sells spontaneously. So, I want to, to pay a very, very warm tribute to FEE, the Foundation for Economic Education, because it did a lot to have this book disseminated. And in France, for example, there are two organizations that, that uh, uh, promote this book, my, my own circle, Frédéric Basquiat and Aleps, uh, the uh, Garelos uh, organization. But we, we might have uh, provoked the sales of some, some thousands, not more than some thousands. Why in America, thanks largely to FE, uh, there has been more than one million copies of these books sold. And that uh, brings my last comment, uh, which is a puzzle for me. Some of our very best people in France are much better appreciated in the United States than in my own country. And to quote a few, you have Tocqueville, uh, Lafayette, Turgot, uh, and of course Bastia. That, that may turn, turn out to be a question, or if you, if you have any answer, otherwise. <laughs> well, I'll say quickly, I, I thank you for your comments about fee. I, I, I of course, can't, being a, a youngster, uh, can't take uh, credit for this because uh, someone, somewhere along the line, introduced uh, Leonard Reed, who was the founder, not to be confused with Larry Reed, who's the current president, uh, but introduced Leonard Reed in the 40s, 1940s, to Boston. I don't know who that was. I don't believe it was Henry Hazlitt. I'm not sure if he knew Hazlitt yet. So someone said, you should read this guy, and I guess there were some, already some translations from earlier, and he said, this, this is the man. And when he had Fee in mind, when he began to think about setting up an organization, I think he had Bastiat in mind to try to do in an institutional way what Bastiat was doing uh, individually. So um, I share your view. We've kept this, these books, not just this book, but his other books, in print continuously. Uh, the American people generally don't know who Bastiat is, so it's not so different from, from France. Uh, on the other hand, some Americans, at least American libertarians, know uh, other Frenchmen besides the ones you've mentioned, but uh, Benjamin Constant and Dunoyer and uh, Charles uh, Comte and Say, of course Say is better known. Uh, so, uh, on your last point, um, oh gosh, escape me now. What was your final? No, I was just puzzled by the fact that uh, uh, the American appreciated some of our best Frenchmen. Oh, the Frenchmen, I guess I did uh, address that, yes. more than we do. Yes, well, there's such a great tradition there. You know, in, in economics, the, the British always get so much credit because of, because of Adam Smith, and of course, they, he deserves much credit, and, uh, and and others that follow. Although I think they get weaker after Smith. I don't think Ricardo and Miller are as good as Smith, but overlooked, and we thank we can thank Hayek for this. Hayek uh, told us also about the French, not just the Scottish Enlightenment, which gets so much, but the French were they're so important. So we have much to be thankful for for the French. No. That was another question.